Okay, so shall we call the meeting to order then? Yes, Jeanette, and then um, I'll try to go through who I've heard, and I'll have Paula um, take record of it. So Jeanette McKee is here. Pat Melby is here. Doug Kerker is here. Ingrid Firemoon is here. Sheila Rice is here. Greg Gould is on the line. John Wagner is on the line. Dave Magistrelli is on the line. I have um, uh, Ginger Fancook on the line, Janine Moss on the line, uh, Mina Chu is on the line, um, Angela Heffern is on the line, Stacy Collette, Kelly Garigula, Mary Bear, Vicki Bauer, and Paula Loving is in my office. <laughs> it is Monday morning. And, really and Bruce Friend, yeah. Who, did, who was that I missed? No, that was me. I just said it sounds really crowded in your office. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> um, who else out there that I, I maybe didn't refer to? Uh, Charlie's on the line. Hey, Charlie's here. So um, just really quick for those that you that are on the webinar, um, I have up the uh, housing.mt.gov, and all I was going to do is just show you what we're doing now. If you go to the meetings, events, and trainings, and then the meetings, public and collaborative, you can then get to the Board of Housing Public Meetings under this link. And then when you get to the Board uh, meeting and minutes, you can see now that we're not only putting on the registration information, but also the printable board packet you can access from the website here. So that's where you'll go from now on to get your board packet. And it just loads, and there it is. So Jeanette, uh, with that, I have the uh, board packet up on the webinar, if, if folks are on the webinar. I don't think it's necessary that you be there, but um, but I'll let you take I'm over. over now, Bruce. Bruce has got I'm on there now. Okay. okay, got it, Pat. Good. So I'm going to follow the agenda as is. I mean, we have approval of prior board meeting minutes. Uh, is that correct, Bruce? And we're going to just stay with exactly what you've got going there. These are from, well, did you guys not do these on March 14th at the uh, at your last meeting? I'm looking no, at we did one. not. Um, a couple oh, of these. Oh, okay. Still finishing okay. them up, and they didn't get on the agenda, so we're oh, going to okay. do the March and May meeting minutes. Well, then I'll ask for a motion to approve or any changes uh, on the March 14th uh, meeting that was held in Butte. This is Doug, and I'll make the motion to approve the March 14th meeting and minutes as presented. Thanks, Doug. Get a second? This is Pat. Hello, a second. Okay, I think Pat, you got you started first, so we'll we'll let we'll take Pat second. Uh, any, any other comments or anything? If not, um, uh, everybody that approves the minutes of March 14th, say aye. 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 Great. Aye. Those are approved. Now, is that the only set of minutes, Bruce? I I looking down. I think that's the only set. A 23rd uh, minutes. Okay, also. we okay we still have those underneath. I'm I'm flat getting down here. All right. They're long, so okay. So we're also approving the board minutes of May 23rd. Are they in the packet? Because I'm actually Bruce. I'm not finding them here. Yeah, they're right below the the March 14th. Okay. It, do okay. you see on the on the side the the bookmarks? Oh, I see them. Yes, I see that on the side. The May 23rd board meetings are on the sidebar. Have people read those? And I wasn't at that meeting, so I would uh, look for and. Um, a motion to approve the May 23rd meetings held in Kalispell. So moved. This is Sheila. Thanks, Sheila. Second? I'll second. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of approving the May 23rd Kalispell minutes, say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Then we're going on. We're done with that. Okay. Then going back to... We're into um, income and purchase price limits under the Home Ownership Program. Vicki? Real, 
<coughs> Jeanette, just real quickly, um, the thing we do have before that is the ARM approval for the qualified allocation plan. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just okay, you've got that multifamily on the arm. Okay, certainly. Mary, then. Mary is sitting across the farm, and I was just... Oh, and this one, she's first. I know. I messed up. Okay. I'm sorry. I was going down. The... I'm going to go the order of the board packet. Okay. Yeah. So should we go backwards? Sorry, and got a little out of order, but let's go in the order of the board packet, which is the arm, and... Mary's across the table, so all I'm going to say is what the memo says is we didn't receive any comments. We don't need any board action, so the plan will move forward and become final, I believe, on June 18th, the day after the final day, which is the 17th. So, um, okay. so that's where we're at with that. Okay. So do you want to now go, You want, if there's a RAM exception, do you want to go do that or do you want to go back to home ownership program? Uh, there are no RAM exceptions, so we can okay, go to home no ownership. Exceptions. Okay, home ownership. Vicki. Good morning. Morning. Um, so the first thing on the agenda um, under home ownership this morning is the purchase price and income limits. Um, the Internal Revenue Service released the revenue procedure that contained the safe harbor numbers um, that's used to establish the average area purchase price, um, average area purchase prices. Uh, the purchase price limits for our programs are determined by multiplying the safe harbor limits by 0.9 and then for non-targeted areas and 1.1 for targeted areas. So you'll see on the, in the board packet, I have listed the purchase price limits using that new um, number. And statewide, the purchase price limits went down between $3,000 and $5,000 um, in all areas except for two. Um, in Fallon County, they actually went up by $8,000. And in Missoula County, they actually went up almost $4,000. But statewide, in all other areas, the purchase price limits of the program did go down. Um, so um, those purchase price limits are there for your review. Um, next, we have the income limits. And to determine our income limits, we have the uh, option of using the 2015 or 2016 HUD median income numbers. Um, we did the calculation using both of those limits and determined that for this year, using the 2015 um, HUD median income numbers is going to suit our borrowers best. Using the 2016 limits, the statewide we had decreases in the um, income limits. So we feel that if we go with the 2015 um, limits that we have the ability to do, we only had a few areas where our income limits will change. Okay. And so, any, any questions, comments? Go ahead, anybody jump in if you need to. And so um, staff requests that the board approve the attached income limits based on the 2015 HUD median income numbers. This is Pat. I'll move. This is, this is Sheila. Pat, a second. Is, is that Sheila? Yes. Okay. Yeah, moved and seconded to approve the income and purchase price limits as presented by Vicki. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. okay. And aye from here. Okay. So the next item on the agenda is um, the approval of the Habitat set-aside. Habitat requests an annual allocation to set aside funds for each fiscal year. Um, on, in June 2015, the board approved 
of a set aside for habitat that expires on June 30th of this year. As of May 30th, the, um, with the loans that we had in process, Habitat had used 706,000 of leaving that balance of 173,000 um, that will expire on June 30th. Dave Magistrelli is on the line. He is requesting this year a uh, set aside of a million dollars to be used throughout the state. Dave, do you have any comments? Well, first of all, yes, I do. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Montana Board of Housing for supporting our programs. Um, your support has been instrumental in us maintaining and continuing our uh, efforts to build affordable housing for those in the uh, 30 to 50 percent AMI. Our efforts this year fell a little short from our, our original goal uh, to tap into that 880,000 completely. Uh, with that, that means that uh, we have some closings that we expect to have uh, completed early into this coming fiscal year, which is why we're asking for the $101 uh, $1 million uh, in, uh, in support. Uh, that figure also represents our, our actual cost of construction, and I know with the support coming from Montana Board of Housing that uh, actual construction, construction cost is reduced because of the interest, so the actual dollars coming out might be a little less. But we're projecting across the state that we could benefit from your support again of $1 million for this coming fiscal year. Any questions, comments for Dave? Thanks, Dave. Any questions for the board? This is Ingrid. I have a question. Okay. On the proposal, it says that the expiration date is 6:30 of 16. What yes, I apologize. Um, we just, just, I just figured that out too. Um, that actually should be 6:30 of 17. Thank, Thank you, you for. Great. Thanks, Ingrid, for noting that. Any other questions, comments? Uh, motion to approve. Uh, Go ahead, Pat. Uh, yeah. I would move to approve the uh, one million dollars set aside for Habitat for Humanity. We have second. This is Doug. I'll second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion to approve the Habitat set aside of a million dollars for this year, say aye. 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 Okay. Thanks for being on the phone, Dave. Okay, thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, so the next couple of items are um, extensions of existing set-asides. Um, for sensory set-asides were established, the Disabled Affordable Home Ownership Program, which provides affordable housing to physically disabled borrowers and allows modifications of the home to make it more architecturally accommodating, um, for their mobility limitations. And then the lot refinance program, which provides permanent financing for new constructed homes that are built on lots where the home buyer had title and still owes on the lot, and the title is encumbered. Um, we've had those set asides for a number of years, and every year we've come back and asked for extensions on those set asides. This year, uh, my proposal is that we remove the expiration dates on those two programs and come back to the board when those funds, um, when we need more allocated funds for those programs as opposed to ex uh, extending that expiration date um, year after year. So that's, that's what you'd like us to vote on is just eliminating would, the extension date? I would prefer okay. that they uh, become permanent programs of the board. Okay, uh, discussion and or motion. This is Doug, I've got a, just a quick question. Is that gonna be fast enough for when they request those dollars? I believe it is. We keep an eye, we do reports on those set-asides um, monthly. We keep an eye on those dollars. And so, it, you know, if they drop down within one or two loan range, um, I would definitely come back for 
money requests immediately. Okay, I'll make the motion to approve. For a second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the elimination of the expiration date on the lot refinance and disabled programs. Uh, if there's no further discussion, uh, everybody can say aye. 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 <clears throat> aye as well. Okay. Vicki? And then with the 80% combined set aside request, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a kind of an update as where we're at, um, re review that program, and then request um, the extension of that program as well. So in 2014, the board approved $5 million in funds um, from the pre almond funds to purchase 80% LTV loans at a 4% rate for those borrowers who are eligible for the community, the NeighborWorks, Mon NeighborWorks Montana 20% community seconds. Um, the program provides a first position lien for 80% of the purchase price, um, and it is a valuable alternative to the FHA insured loans. The expiration date on that program currently is 6:30 of, two, of 2016. When we did the $5 million set aside, we were a bit unsure as to the sustainability of that program and where we would get funding for it on a regular basis. Um, so that's why we put it the $5 limit and also the expiration date, because we wanted to be able to see where we'd be at in a couple of years. So we have currently been issuing bonds out of the single family one indenture. When we issue bonds out of the single family one indenture, that allows us to purchase those 80% loans out of regular bond proceeds as opposed to using set aside funds. So we currently have five, that $5 million left because we've been in single family one since this set aside was established. Um, once we do start issuing bonds out of the single family two indenture, there will be a need to actually have, to utilize some of that $5 million because 80% loans, non-insured loans aren't allowed under the single family two indenture. So my request for the 80% is to um, leave the $5 million intact for the 80% combined set aside, um, but again, eliminate the expiration date on that so that um, we'll, I'll, I'll, we'll just come back to the board as those funds start to dwindle as we need um, to reload it. Okay, um, discussion, anybody? Questions? Motion? Vicki, this is Sheila. I just wanted to um, confirm that um, it wouldn't just be NeighborWorks Montana, but any nonprofit that was able to offer the 20 plus community seconds would be eligible for the board. Um, if the board one. so chose, yes. Currently, the set aside is established to pair with the NeighborWorks Montana program. That's how we set it up, and it's never, we've never. It's never been discussed whether or not another it could be paired with another one. I don't, yeah, I don't feel that there's a reason not to. The reason I'm asking is that. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go ahead. I was going to make a motion. So if you still have questions or comments, go ahead. Um, I guess my question is whether or not I we need to include this in this motion. Because that's, it, yes, it, um, that's what I was going to do. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. First of all, I apologize for dropping my phone. It must have been quite a bang on on the line. Oh, um, I didn't really hear it. Gee. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Uh, I would move <laughs> approval of this proposal uh, and that it be um, uh, that it allow uh, the twenty percent down payment from any nonprofit in addition to NeighborWorks. Okay, second. This is Doug, I'll second. Is there a further discussion? Okay, so uh, what I understand is that we're gonna, uh, we're gonna 
eliminate this extension date and then also allow other nonprofits to participate should that be um, I mean useful or needed or something of the sort besides neighbor works. Um, all in favor of that motion that Pat presented, Sheila Seconden, say aye. 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 Uh, this okay. is Sheila. I think I this is Sheila. I think I should have changed that both. Say that Sheila, could you say that once again? There was some squeakiness. I think I should go on record as abstaining from that vote. Yeah, okay. So so done. Okay, Vicki, we got one more thing there. So the final item I have on the agenda is the approval of the MCC resolution. The mortgage credit certificate uh, program allows eligible home buyers to receive a dollar for dollar reduction of their federal income taxes for up to 20% of the annual interest paid on their mortgages. Borrowers can file an amended withholding statement with their employer and increase their monthly take home pay by the amount of the credit. This additional income can be used to help qualify a borrower for a loan. The MCC can be attached to any loan statewide except loans financed through the Montana Board of Housing bond programs. Um, the attached resolution for your consideration authorizes the use of $36 million in bond cap to provide $9 of tax credit authority. Um, it's a four to one trade off. And so the staff requests that the board approve the attached resolution. Okay, any discussion? Um, motion to approve. This is Sheila, I'll move it. Second. This is Ingrid, I'll second it. Okay, Ingrid, so it's been moved and approved to, uh, it's been Motion moved and seconded to approve the MCC resolution approval. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, Vicki. Thank you. Okay, Bruce. Um, where now? Where? We're done. Yeah. At least at this point, um, we're not scheduled um, for another board meeting until, let's look at the bottom, August 15th. August 15th, in Helena. Letters of intent at that point in time. There is a potential for a need for the later June Yeah, if there is, uh, there's always the chance we may need to have a board meeting and we'll do it by webinar, but, but at least right now we're not scheduled until August. So. Okay, <clears throat> and we haven't have we had any further comments on the or any comments at all on the um, you know what I'm saying the our, our the housing credit program the allocation plan QAP. Nope, no, we just we didn't have any more comments. I mean, we had a lot to begin oh. with, but not any one not at the end. So, like okay. I said, that will become pretty much approved through the ARM process um, yeah. on 18th and ready for our next round. Okay. Any other further questions, discussion, board members, or anybody else on the phone that would like to speak? Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you, guys. Have so, a great summer. Thanks. Same to you. Thanks. So, thank Thanks. you very much. It was thank you, short everyone. and sweet. You. Appreciate it. Okay, yeah. everybody. Meeting is adjourned. Okay. okay. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.